Hello, Internet. It's me, Spectral Vectors. You might remember me from such Blender add-ons as Right Mouse Navigation, uh, Mind Mapper, Ghibli Generator, or series like What's Bippy? Uh, today I'm here with a new project. I was recently contacted by Pierre Schiller of the YouTube channel Active Motion Pictures. Uh, he specializes in anime NPR style rendering, sort of that, uh, that Arc System Works, Guilty Gear style, Genshin Impact. And he was looking for some help getting a macro keyboard solution happening in Blender. So his first thought was to get a uh, second keyboard, just a generic keyboard, plug it in and start driving macros from that. And there are a bunch of software solutions that allow you to do that. For whatever reason, they don't play nice with Blender. And he was getting this echo, the original key was going in addition to the macro being sent. Um, so he got in touch with me and we went back and forth a little bit before we ended up deciding that the best way to go could be and should be uh, a dedicated hardware solution. And with that in mind, let's skip straight to the demo. This is the prototype for the, I guess I'm calling it for now, the Blender macro board or the blend board. And uh, I'll show you what it is currently capable of. Okay, so we're here in Blender 3.3. And uh, what we're going to do first is give some of these knobs a little twist. You can see this is set to uh, scaling. So we're scaling in each different axis. Now let's change pages. Uh, go back to the first page. Now these knobs are controlling rotation and we can actually keyframe rotation for individual axes as well. And then we'll rotate in the Z. Now let's, oops, right, that's my, uh, Screen record, whoops. Uh, so let's change pages again. And now we've got the uh, location being affected. So back to page one. And you can see the page changing in the bottom. Oh, actually my face is covering it. Uh, where can we, oops, that's not the right screen. There, uh, right down in the bottom right. Um, so watch again, I'll change pages and whoops, have to be in Blender, change pages. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner that uh, icon is changing. So back on general page one, let's uh, click our object again. And this button allows us to run a script that performs a handful of functions. So this is the prototype for the Blender macro board. So now that you've seen uh, what it can do, let's look at how it does it. This right here, uh, whoop, 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 the Raspberry Pi Pico uh, is what powers the device. And I chose this for a handful of reasons to be the, the backbone of this device, or at least this iteration. Um, these are cheap. Uh, for me, these are $5. I'm Canadian, so $5 Canadian. Uh, a similar Arduino board, the Pro Micro, was going for around $30. Um, so it was uh, you know, substantially more expensive than this. There's a lot of functionality built into this. Uh, it's more than just uh, you know, switches, buttons, and knobs. Um, right now that's all it can do, but uh, there's a, a lot of expandability that comes with this board and the chip that's on it, the RP2040, uh, could also be brought to uh, a larger board later. That's more for a future thing. Um, but the other thing that's cool about this is you can write on it in Python, essentially, or uh, Circuit Python because I'm using the Adafruit uh, HID library, HID for human interface device, meaning like a keyboard or a mouse or a you know, a knob or a dial or something. And that allows you to write using CircuitPython, which again is similar enough to Python that anyone who's done any coding, any scripting in Blender, any uh, add-on writing should feel relatively at home. Um, it also doesn't require that you compile any sort of uh, files or firmware. Um, you may have to refresh the code on the device. You may have to reset it. Um, but uh, this project is in a pretty alpha state, so a lot of things are probably going to change. There are already a lot of uh, Pico-based macro boards. There's a lot of different solutions, but what differentiates this project is that we're looking specifically towards functionality with Blender. Uh, so Pierre's experience came with using things like control surfaces for video editors. So um, he's using hardware like uh, Blackmagic, Loop Deck, uh, those types of things. Uh, my background is in audio, so I'm used to using control surfaces for audio hardware. Um, 
you know, things like Avid Control Surfaces for Pro Tools, um, Behringer, M-Audio, you know, you name it. There's tons of uh, Focusrite, SSL. There's lots of different dedicated hardware solutions for editors. So that is the goal that we're striving towards, to have something that's not just a macro pad, but something that allows that deep level of control over the entire program. So in addition to uh, the design decision of going with the Pico, going with Python, um, I also decided that uh, there should be a license uh, decision made here. And to keep it in line with Blender, uh, it's going to all be GPL, so free open source uh, code and hardware designs uh, when we get to that stage. And one of the factors uh, that's important to me is that it's quickly and easily customizable for beginners. So it should be something that allows an advanced user to create whatever feature they may want or need, but it also isn't so daunting for a beginner, someone who's not that familiar with Blender, to get in there and start messing around. Uh, there is also that uh, paging or layering function that I demonstrated earlier, so that even though there are only uh, nine keys, 10 keys on the device, or you know, 13 if we count the, uh, these have push buttons as well as uh, rotary encoders. The paging function means you can assign as many pages as you want. So you essentially have infinite macros as long as you're willing to, you know, page through to get them. And doing a few rough calculations, it seems like if we go with a stock Pico, you could have a configuration like uh, nine rotary encoders or possibly up to a hundred something buttons in a, a key matrix. So the board currently sends uh, single key presses, key combinations, text, or script files that are stored either on the, uh, the board itself or on your PC. So let's take a, a quick little look at the code for the device. So it'll appear as a uh, standard USB device when you plug it in, like a USB stick, and that allows you to navigate straight here to the code file. So this is essentially where everything comes together to get run. Um, but the code file here, and I have it open in uh, Thani, uh, which is a multi-platform code editor. You can get that for any, any platform that you're on. This runs the, uh, the main code for the device. And what it does is it basically imports from a series of user accessible files. So you can go in here into board setup, into layout, and you can change um, some, maybe I'll just do the preview here, like how many pins you're using, how many buttons you have, uh, how many rotaries, what should happen with the page change function. It's got a list of um, the key codes that you're able to send. And then in the pages folder, you have what is actually assigned to each page. And the way this is set up, uh, you can give it a name at the top. Each button is essentially its own function. And then that will send either a single key, like here we're sending the escape key, or here to undo, we're sending control and Z at the same time. Uh, we go down here to button number four, and that will run a script. So I've registered a custom operator in Blender to um, allow me to do that uh, little overlay that um, changes pages and runs scripts. Um, and if we go and check this out, so in lib scripts object test, so in scripts, we can check out object test and Simple little thing. We're going to transform it, we're going to rotate it, resize it, and then we're going to uh, transform it again using a, a slightly different method. So what that looks like here, we'll just start with a uh, fresh mesh, execute the script, execute the script again. So it has a, a number of functions that you can can do. In addition to the, the key presses and the text, you can also send your own custom script files, and those could be shared to, uh, you know, a repository online, possibly the, the GitHub repository that it's on right now, um, so that everyone could share their own scripts and shortcuts. They're essentially just operators without having to uh, register an operator. So that is the basic function and uh, the sort of the roadmap for the device. Um, Pierre has expressed interest in having uh, trackball functionality. I know I would like to have things like uh, rotary potentiometers, linear potentiometers uh, for all the many values in Blender that go from zero to one. Um, in addition to, you know, other uh, methods of input like track pads, uh, for instance, XY pads, um, there's lots of things that it could do in the future with development. Um, I think it should probably have a custom PCB designed at least to mount the Pico on, if not to go straight from the RP2040. But having developed and having released a number of free and open source add-ons for Blender over the years, I know that there is 
there is a downside to the free and open source, and that comes in the ability to maintain it. So I like to write free add-ons. I like to give my stuff away. I like to show people you know, behind the scenes of the code so they understand how they're doing it. Um, but this project is a little different because it's actual physical hardware. So there's actual costs uh, you know, being laid out uh, all the time. So in this instance, I am asking if it's possible for you, if you uh, want to support this project, um, you know, on the most basic level, if you can like and subscribe, uh, you know, share this video, if you can uh, head over to my Patreon, <laughs> head over to my Patreon, and uh, there's uh, a few tiers there, um, you know, if there's any amount that you're comfortable with, even the smallest amount helps offset the cost of you know, more key switches, more rotaries, uh, you know, optical sensors for trackballs, um, etc. Uh, but I'll put links down to the, the GitHub repo in the description. And, uh, you know, please comment, share, subscribe. Um, let me know if you think this is a good project. Let me know if you think, you know, there's a particular function that it needs. Yeah, let me know what you think. If you're able to head to Ko-Fi, Ko-Fi, Ko-Fi. Uh, or Patreon and give a little donation or, you know, become a patron, that would be, uh, you know, massively appreciated. And, uh, yeah, until next time, I'll uh, keep working away and I'll keep you updated about the Blender macro board. Thanks, everybody. I love you. You're so good looking. Bye.